Hi, I'm Tom. This is Mina, and this is Kitty Help Desk. So today I thought it was important to involve Mina in this particular video because a lot of these toys are hers that date back uh, 14 years. What you see on the table before me are toys that I have collected over time. A lot of toys have gotten damaged and thrown away or lost. And these are just, this is maybe half of what I have in our toy inventory here at Kitty Help Desk. And uh, I just wanted to talk to you for a minute about how to choose toys for your cat and really what the usefulness of toys are within, you know, training and, and um, the lifestyle of your cat. Especially if your cat's an indoor only cat, they're gonna need daily play sessions, at least uh, a couple of five or 10 minute long play sessions each day to keep them um, interested and occupied. And, and it's important to really sort of audition toys so that they have a chance to give you feedback. And you, you just, at first it's gonna be a lot of trial and error um, where you buy things and you, you present them and they, they kind of sniff them because they've got a new smell and then they run off and do something else. The thing is, you can't really take that as the whole audition because a cat often will react that way to something new, but over time will begin to accept it. And so a cat like Mina is certainly not going to accept anything right away. She is a little slow to change. So when I introduce something, she's always interested in it to begin with, and then acts like it's just not interesting at all. But she almost always comes back to things. So you want to leave them out where they can get to them and they can tell you what they like or dislike. Like right now she's telling me she really likes these catnip toys here. Um, this is like a Yao catnip banana. And she really loves, this is her absolute favorite. We call it the springy. It is uh, called Looney Loops. And these are just little plastic spring-like things um, that are really easy for a cat to chase and to pick up. Um, she's also showing us that she likes anything with feathers. Anything with feathers on it, certain cats will like. Now, the thing that you have to bear in mind is that cats tend to be a little bit um, genetically programmed to prefer one thing or another. I, I don't know that there's ever really been any studies about that, but, but you know, there are bound to be cats that really focus on hunting rodents. And then there are cats that focus on hunting birds and some that focus on hunting snakes and lizards. And in their, in their um, instinctual makeup, they really are going to prefer one prey over another in the wild. So what you have to do is you have to sort of find the toys that appeal to that cat's particular sort of prey model. And some cats will like all of those different kinds of prey. Some will prefer some and not others. Um, but almost all cats really like toys that they can pick up and move around like these plastic balls. Like, for example, you can play with a cat with a ping pong ball like this. And they will chase it and they'll enjoy chasing it and batting it around but they can't pick it up. Whereas a ball like this that has sort of tongs, I don't know if you can see it, um, but they can really pick this up in their mouths. And Miss Lucy really loves these because she can bat them around like any other ball, but then if she wants to move it around, she can pick it up with her mouth and carry it around. The same thing goes for these uh, Looney Loops. One of the big appeals of this is that it's really easy for a cat like Mina. Mina is missing seven of her teeth. Um, so a, a, a toy like this that's easy to pick up is more fun for her because she can then play fetch and she loves to play fetch. Um, one little sidebar about fetch, that tends to be controlled um, genetically and your cat will either play fetch or they won't play fetch. And if they won't, there's really no training them to do it. It's uh, something that they come, you know, sort of prepackaged with both Lucy and Mina <laughs> like to play fetch, uh-oh. And Mina really loves, this is why she's playing with these, she loves these wand toys. Almost every cat will love to play with a wand toy at some point or another. And there are a large variety of them. Uh, this is one, 
Here's one that's got like a little bell in it. Um, I like to pick the ones that have feathers on the bottom of them because the feathers are very attractive to Mina. And if you see her here, she will chase this around on the table because it's got the feathers in it. Um, so that's one of her favorites. But all of these, these wand toys, you can kind of use them all the same way. What you want to do is use them like prey and maybe drag them along the floor and like have them disappear around things so that they can hunt them. I mean, the, the real appeal to all of this play is that it emulates hunting. So they get to get that out of their system a little bit and they can hunt the toys in place of real prey where if they were outdoor cats, they could uh, kind of do some damage to the ecosystem in, in some cases. Um, there's been a lot of talk about that. I don't know that the true impact of that has really been determined by multiple reinforcing peer-reviewed studies, but there have been some studies done that do show that, that pet cats that are allowed outdoors do have some impact on the ecosystem, especially on, on um, wild bird populations. So if we can keep them inside and we can keep them entertained with this instead of a real bird, <laughs> we, we're, we're doing great. Now, here's the, the only real downside to all of these toys that I have here on the table. There is a downside and that is cost. A lot of these toys are ridiculously expensive for what they are. I mean, you know, a pack of three of these I think is four or five dollars and this is just a little stamped out piece of plastic. Um, I know it takes money to bring it to market and all that and, and I really usually don't complain about it, but for people who are on a very tight budget and they really want something for their cats to enjoy, I, I just wanna reinforce the idea that homemade toys are just as good to cats as anything that you buy in the store. And they are going to enjoy them as much as anything. In fact, Mina's over here playing with something that I made out of uh, a piece of twine and I tied it around this little catnip yow fish. The downside to something with string is you wanna make sure that you don't leave that out where they can get to it because a cat could inadvertently swallow that. And to some degree, that's why the fish being tied onto the end of this is a good idea. Um, but you know, you can always control access to this by putting it into a drawer or inside a box, uh, like a storage container. Um, just be diligent and don't leave it out. But if you leave a piece of string out, you know, it could, <laughs> oh, she's found the treats. Come here, honey. Would you like a treat? That does kind of bring up another subject. Mina's control, <laughs> controlling the video today. This, this video today is directed by Miss Mina. Um, uh, it's important that after you let your cat hunt a toy that you give them either a, a small meal or you, you give them a treat. You know, it's just the way they're wired is, is to hunt, kill, eat, and crash. Conserve the calories they just ate. You know, you just want to make sure that the toys you play with allow them to catch something. Um, that's why I really don't ever play with laser toys with them because a laser is impossible to catch. A dot is impossible to catch. And it can create some frustration in cats. Now you can, you can play with laser toys with them because a lot of cats are really excited by them. But um, you just have to make sure you transition to a toy. You gonna get out? Okay. That you transition to a toy that they can catch after you work them up with the laser so that they can get that satisfaction at the end of the game. Um, so, like I said, back to the subject of homemade toys, this piece of paper, I can tear it in half and crumple it up. And this crumpled piece of paper is every bit as appealing to a cat, maybe more appealing because it makes this crunchy sound. And that really, really drives them crazy. You know, that, that costs next to nothing. But it's only limited by your own imagination what you can do with things that you have in your home. Um, just make sure that they're safe for cats. If you're only going to buy a couple of toys, um, I've got a couple to suggest to you. One is this wonderful toy that's called the Bird and is endlessly entertaining to almost every cat 
I've ever introduced it to, along with all of the Yao catnip toys. And then, the, of course, the Looney Loops are among our favorites, and the same company makes these balls. I'll try to include links down in the, in the um, description below. You like them too? So that's it. I, I think um, for the most part, shopping for toys is uh, more fun for people than it is for cats sometimes. Although there is something to be said for uh, introducing them to new smells periodically. That's why, you know, if I go to Target or I go to the grocery store, sometimes I'll look and see if there's something on the shelf and just pick up one little something just so that they have something to, to uh, explore a new smell. So thanks for watching. Um, if you have particular toys that your cats like, please uh, include them in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe if you like what I do here and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye. Thank you.